Welcome back to Finding Gina Marie, where we share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. We've always had a fascination with hot air balloons, but we've never really had it as part of our bucket list. Even when I booked the trip to Egypt, it was not on our list of things to do. However, when we were in Cairo and I was looking at things to do in Luxor, I saw the idea of a hot air balloon and I just made the snap decision to book it. And as it turns out, Luxor is one of the cheapest places to do hot air balloons. In the entire world. Right. So stick around to the end. We've got tips that are going to make your hot air balloon experience best and the cost that we paid for doing our hot air balloon experience. So you may be wondering, where is the launch site? Typically, it's going to be on the west bank of the Nile River and near the temple of Queen Hatshepsut. Some vendors may launch from a different location, but just bear in mind that if you're really getting a rock bottom price, they may not be flying over the same archeological sites and you may not have as cool of an experience. So what should you wear to a hot air balloon ride? Well, we got up at zero dark early. Four o'clock in the morning for a five o'clock pickup. Yeah, so it's a little chilly. We wore light jackets. Especially since there's going to be a ground crew that is going to be picking you up and they're made up of Egyptian men. So you just want to be dressed modestly. And which says picking you up, you literally lifting you up into the basket. <laughs> True. But do realize that you're going into a balloon that's lifted into the air by this huge flame that will make you feel very hot at some points in your body, like the back of my head. Even the top of your my head, I remember feeling, wow, that's really hot. Well, she's shorter, so the top of her head, the back of my head. I know the burning question is how safe is it to... Burning the flame, I get it. <laughs> ...to be in a hot air balloon. Our vendor has been flying for 25 years, and it really helped that safety information was scattered all throughout their website, so we really felt like they were taking it seriously. There was a short van ride over to the actual launch site for the balloons, and on that ride, they actually gave us a briefing with a video they held up on a tablet and it told us all about the safety precautions. Becoming a hot air balloon pilot takes many, many years of training and you can feel confident knowing that Egyptian pilots are as skilled as any other place in the world. So how many people will fit in this hot air balloon basket? Now you may have seen pictures of a small single square of a basket that goes up in a hot air balloon. These are much different. They're long, they're rectangular, they have four different sections on either end. Then they have a center section which holds the pilot and also the actual propellants that shoot hot air up into the balloon. Now these hot air balloon baskets are sturdy as anything. Like the edges are huge rolls. They're bragging about how they're made in Bristol, England. They must have said that like five times when they were on this ride. The balloon made in England and Bristol City, designed in England, Bristol City. Ours held like four people to a compartment and that meant there 16 to 20 people could fit on one balloon ride. Those small baskets that you sometimes see do exist, but they're not what is predominant in Luxor. Each section does allow for people to see from every angle. So uh, you're not going to be in the middle and not be able to lean over and look outside and see the view. Everything's a window solution. <laughs> exactly. And not only are these baskets big and sturdy, they're really tall. Like you have to work your butt off to get in and out, which is why they actually have to help some people in and out of the basket because it is a climb. And that means it's very safe because you're not just gonna tip out of the basket accidentally when you're up in the air. In fact, we even saw people who were using canes that had help getting in and out of the balloon. So even if you have poor mobility, it's still something you'll be able to do. Yeah, they have plenty of people helping people. so you're not gonna to have to climb in and out by yourself. You may be wondering if you get weighed before you get on the hot air balloon. No, you do not. These balloons are very powerful. The hot air they're blowing up into them can take a lot of people up, so that's not the concern. And they're pretty good about loading and picking who goes in what section of the balloon. So they know what they're doing. They don't have to weigh people. So what does flying in a hot air balloon feel like? Well, I had no clue what it was gonna feel like, and I have a little bit of a fear of heights mostly with wobbly ladders and being on a space where I feel like I might fall off, like when I used to have to do roof work. It was not my comfortable place. But I'm not afraid of flying in planes, and I wasn't afraid when we were in a helicopter, and the hot air balloon actually felt incredibly safe. I didn't feel one little bit of nervousness or fear when I was going up in this thing. It feels amazing, and it feels like nothing at all at the same time, if that's even something to understand. I had to check a couple of times to look down to make sure we actually left the ground 
because I wasn't sure. I, it's it, feels just, like, it feels like you're on a sturdy foundation. Yeah, it doesn't feel like you're in an elevator, like you're being pushed up. It's just very gradual. Or even the sensation of riding on a roller coaster oh, right. where you're going up or a roller coaster when you're coming down. There's no butterflies um, that were in my stomach. No, and there's no sudden movements either. Balloons are very slow and you know that's part of the balloon ride though. I mean you're going up in the air and they're going where the wind takes them. So you know you're not going to have these radical turns. You're not going to suddenly decide we're going to land this second. It's all very smooth, all very gradual and just lovely. I mean just a, a perfect opportunity to get out there with the camera because no fast movements at all. Even when you're flying quickly it doesn't feel like you're being propelled or anything like that. There is like the sense of weightlessness that is just very cool. Judy wrote about this in Judy's journal on FindingGenuary.com. Go ahead and take a look at that article. I'll put a link below. One of the additional feelings was how peaceful it was and also how silent. You know, when you're on a plane, you're hearing the engines roar. Well, you really aren't hearing anything like that. Until the fire goes off. And that's very loud. That sound is an ominous and you don't feel any kind of motion that would put you out of your comfort zone. In fact, what it's what's cool about it is they even play tunes <laughs> with that. So there's shaving a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> or dun 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 dun. That's shaving a haircut. Oh. <laughs> Doing something new if you didn't know that. FindGenuary.com. <laughs> I knew it and forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've talked about what it feels like, let's talk about what you're actually going to see. First off, there's a patchwork of grasses and sugarcane fields, but probably the number one thing that you're going to see that is a once in a lifetime experience is viewing all of the archeological sites from 1300 feet above ground. And that includes the Colossi of Memnon, the Valley of the Kings, the Temple of Queen Hatshepsut, and Temple of Karnak. I thought it was really cool to be able to see all of those from a bird's eye view because no matter how much time you spend at those sites, it's going to give you another perspective. You can actually see the scope of some of these archaeological sites that you'll never see walking through them. You're also moving slowly over them, so you can really study them. One of the other really cool things is that there are still archaeological digs happening. There's always something new being found in Egypt. And if you get to go to an early morning one, the first in the morning like we went to, you get to see the sunrise, which is beautiful from the balloons level. There's just something spectacular about rising up off the ground as the sun rises off the horizon. It's absolutely exquisite. And I am a firm believer that you can never see too many sunrises or sunsets in a lifetime. And being the uh, first ride, we were actually the first balloon up in the air too. And that was amazing because it actually gave us some perspective as to how high we were up. You could see the other balloons when you're next to them. And then as you're going up in the air, you can see how small they were getting. They were still on the ground. And then when you're up in the air as high as we got, we got to see all the other balloons around us. Just one of those, wow, I'm so glad we did this moments. Everybody has seen what it looks like to see hot air balloons in the air, but to actually be up in the air among them is next level. If you've been on a hot air balloon ride before, we'd love to hear about it. Let us know in the comments what your experience was like, how much it cost you, all the details so we can share with our community. Don't forget to include where you were when you were flying as well. So how much time does it take to do a balloon ride? The actual ride itself can vary greatly because it depends on how many people are in there, the weather conditions, everything else. The balloon goes up in the air and it's supposed to last from 40 minutes to an hour and a half. An hour and a half is pretty unreasonable. There has to be no wind at all and it has to be moving very slowly. The more wind there is, the shorter the balloon ride is going to go because they do have to catch your balloon and follow along with it when it lands. The whole experience from door to door, you can expect to take two and a half to three hours. And that is from them picking you up uh, from your hotel or your Airbnb and then driving by bus and then another bus, depending if you're on the East Bank. It may also include a Felucca boat ride and then the experience itself. It took us two and a half hours. For us, it was a great experience because we were on the West Bank already. So we didn't have wasted time trying to get to the site. How high does a hot air balloon typically fly? As I mentioned, ours was up to 1,500 feet above ground. 
It could be 1300, could be a little bit more than that, depending on weather conditions. You actually get pilot updates th throughout this flight. They're gonna tell you what sites you're flying over and they're gonna tell you how high you're up and how much longer they think you're gonna be on this trip. And they'll tell you, you know, we're, we're getting about ready to land, get into position. So listen to the pilot, you get a lot of good information from him. So how does it feel when you land in a hot air balloon? Well, the pilot is gonna give you a pitch about how some hot air balloons land with a bump in other places and how some hot air balloons bounce along the ground in other places. But here in Egypt, we land smooth yeah. and soft. So you're gonna really have a wonderful experience. <laughs> and when the balloon lands, it all depends on the weather again. If it's high winds, you're definitely gonna have a rougher landing. But they're really good at this. I think we had one little bump and then a slide across the ground. And then the team of uh, helpers came and ran and grabbed the balloon. You didn't feel like you were descending. It didn't feel like your stomach was in knots over any kind of movement. And even the bounce was so minimal. You didn't feel any kind of worry that you were going to crash or anything like that at all. Like I said, everything's in slow motion and that's a good thing. What happens after you land? You can see as you're descending in the balloon that there's a bunch of vehicles following the balloon. They may be on the road, they may have to get off the road. And there's a bunch of people also converging on the spot where they think you're going to land because balloons go where they want to go and they're not sure where the landing spot's going to be. And they redirect as much as they can. So it's not like you're going to be like in some wilderness somewhere. Right. <laughs> but you're lucky in this are it's open wind. Open area, very fast wind. Basket bump, bump, bump. Basket tip over. 50% hard landing. 50% smooth land. You're lucky today. Yeah. Once it's safe for you to get out of the basket, there will be people, of course, helping you. And there are footholds for you to climb through and they will be guiding your steps. And once you're out of the basket, then they guide you over to the side, make sure that everyone's together. And once your group is all together, then they'll divide you up into the vans you need to go to to get to your next destination. But first they'll be taking pictures and video. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They, they want to sell you a video of it. They want to sell you any pictures of it. And on the way to the van, there's also some donkeys on the side, camels on the side. There'll be somebody else trying to get a little bit of money out of you. In fact, I took a picture of a donkey because he looked like he was smiling at us. Then I found out there was a young man who was like, that'll be money, please. You know, and he's holding his hand out like, Okay, here's your money. It was a smiling donkey that was a setup. <laughs> it was a trained donkey. So now on to our tips, starting with tip number one, which is book early. These are hard to get on sometimes because weather stops a lot of the balloon rides and they also fill up quickly, especially if you want a specific vendor to get on a balloon ride with, because you wanna have a choice of exactly how you want this balloon ride to be experienced. You can arrange for a hot air balloon ride as an add-on to a Nile cruise. However, I just wanna warn you that on our cruise, there were people who had delays because of bad weather. So even though it wasn't ideal for us to be booking the very first morning after we arrived in Luxor, we're really glad we did because our tour guide on our Nile cruise mentioned that there was a week where they had to cancel all flights due to weather. No way we're cold up here. No, <laughs> I didn't realize. Yeah, I almost backed out of it. I said, this is really too early to get up after our travel day. But if we would have skipped that, we might not have seen the sunrise. We might not have gone up at all because weather could have changed very dramatically. And it did a week later. Tip two, costs are going to vary. It's hard to know what is a fair price and everybody wants to cut you a deal in Egypt. So you have to be prepared that there may be a degree of negotiations. There's always negotiations in Egypt. And although there was a moment where I thought, oh, did we overpay? Yeah. I was really at the end of it, very happy with my experience. Remember, it's not just about the cost. As Judy said, we got a sunrise. We got uh, a, a really good first balloon experience. It's really important that if this is the one time you're gonna go up in a hot air balloon, that you have the best experience possible. So if you pay a few extra dollars for it, that's not gonna make or break your experience. But if you don't get that morning experience you want or whenever you wanna go up or wherever you wanna go up, that's what's most important, control that. One of our tour guides warned us that some of these people that were getting good prices were actually getting bumped from the sunrise ride to the next one, or sometimes they missed their ride altogether if there was people paying higher prices and they said, well, 
These people didn't pay enough, so we'll move them to another day. Tip number three, make sure you get the preferred flight time that you want to actually take. Tour companies typically have two scheduled rides per day. One is at sunrise and the other one is just after that. Some people don't want to be up at four o'clock in the morning and get that early sunrise. Some people just want to get a hot air balloon ride. So make sure you pick the time that you actually want to go up. Tip four is be on time for your pickup. Make sure you set multiple alarms if necessary. It will be a really early rise time, but you want to make sure that you do not make other people wait and potentially miss seeing the sunrise. Tip number five is stay in close contact with your vendor. There's a lot of chaos that goes on in Egypt and sometimes you have to be proactive about who you're talking to and how you're talking to them. You know, you should have some sort of way to contact them, WhatsApp or some other way that they're comfortable with and make sure that you know the day before that you're still on the schedule for that morning because you can get up at 4 a.m. and stand outside your apartment or your hotel and no one's gonna pick you up if you didn't confirm that ride. Most tour companies are going to be extremely reliable, but if this is your once in a lifetime experience, yeah. it doesn't hurt for you to be proactive. We were a little confused about where this was gonna take off from. We thought the West Bank was the opposite side from where we had to go. So we thought maybe we have to take a boat ride first. Turns out we just had a nice little van ride over to the site. People coming from the East Bank had to take a Feluca boat over to our side and then they got on the vans and were transported. It's an honest mistake because most people are staying on the East Bank versus the West Bank. Right. But they're missing out. They are missing out. We have a video about that. If you're not subscribed, you should be because you're not going to want to miss that episode. All right, let's move on to the costs. You're going to pay for the actual balloon ride itself. You're going to pay for any kind of tips that you have to pay for the driver and the crew. You're going to also pay for any souvenirs that you might want to buy and any photos or video at the end of the ride. The ride itself was 80 US dollars per person. So 160 total. We gave between 1200 and 1500 Egyptian pounds for all of the tips that we provided. We probably gave another 200 Egyptian pounds in various donations to smiling donkeys and children. And then although we didn't buy them ourselves, the cost for a DVD or a USB drive runs probably between 10 to 20 US dollars. Would we do this again? A million percent yes. We had an incredible experience. It was exhilarating. We are so happy that we got to experience this for ourselves instead of just reading about it or hearing about it from someone else. If you are excited by this video to do a hot air balloon ride, go ahead and leave a comment below with a balloon emoji in it to let us know. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And check out findinggeniemarie.com. We've got Judy's journal where she talks in more detail about these. Until next time. Until next time. One of our tour guides mentioned that some people who have bargain basement prices don't necessarily get to go on the sunset tour. Sunrise. Sunrise, sorry. Vendors typically have two scheduled rides per day, a sunset and one that's just after sunset. Sunrise, sunrise. <laughs> Sometimes got relegated off of a sunset ride sunrise. to the... God bless it. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Yes.